on the Golis escarpment. Dating back to roughly 12,000 years to 40,000 years ago. Moreover, Hayward Setenkar, a game hunter and adventurer affiliated with the British Royal Geographical Society, discovered stone hand axes at Jelelo between the port of Berbera and Hargesa in 1896, which dates back to 40,000 years ago. The Somali prehistoric hand axes have since been exhibited in public museums such as the British and Australian museums. Yet still, more evidence of prehistoric human habitation of the Somali territory was discovered at Las Gale complex, located about 50 kilometers north of Hargesa. The Las Gale cave paintings depict images of cows and local inhabitants dressed in what appears to have been ceremonial robes and even a few dogs. The humans have their hands in the air in what is considered a worshipping posture. The cave walls are also covered in old hieroglyphic scriptures. Somalis have known the existence of these caves for centuries and have regarded them as historical sites, hence the Somali name for these caves. Yet still, the Western world only found out about these sites in 2003 when a French team of archaeologists was searching the caves in the area. The paintings of Las Gil demonstrate early pastoral livestock herding in the Horn of Africa. In particular, the camel is believed to have been domesticated in the Horn of Africa between the 3rd and 2nd millennium BC, and from there they are reportedly spread to Egypt and the north of Africa. Prior to the advent of Islam in Somalia, its indigenous population are believed to have adhered and practiced a complex belief system which comprised of various entities who are all governed by a single all-powerful deity called Ebe, who is also referred to as Wak, from whose name the ancient religion draws its own name, Ebe Wak. Their ordinary religious temples and places of worship were known as Khero, However, for more ceremonial events, the ancient Somalis would attend the Talo, where important rituals were conducted under the guidance of a priest known as Wadad. With the scarce historical documentation still extant and available to researchers in this area, we can outline a basic overview of the ancient spiritual hierarchy upheld and venerated by the ancient people of Somalia. The religion of Ebewak is said to have been comprised of the following key figures. Above all deities and entities in the religion of Ebewak was the mighty Wak who presided over the affairs of humanity. It was he that the ancient people of Somalia venerated above all others. They attributed to him the creation of mankind for the sole purpose of praising and venerating him. According to classic Somali legends, he lived in the heavens and whenever nomad successfully prayed for rain, it was known as Barwako, which researchers have loosely translated as God's rain. The identity of this Somali deity is also believed to have been synonymous to that of the ancient Kushitic sky god. Besides Wak himself, the ancient people of Somalia also venerated the Ayanle, who are believed to have been good spirits who acted as mediators between God and human beings. The Ayanle were also held as auspicious mediators and conveyors of blessings. In biblical terms, these could be comparable to angels sent to God over humanity. Also somewhat comparable to the angel of death was Hor. He was believed to have been the messenger of destruction and was commonly depicted in the form of a large bird some historians have drawn comparison to the ancient Egyptian deity, Horus, whose name also bears a very similar resemblance to that of Hor. Finally, the ancient religion of Ebewak incorporated the concept of divine retribution, justice and punishment for the evils committed by mankind. The conveyor of such retribution and punishment was known as Nidar, also known as the writer of wrong. Nidar was ultimately venerated 
as a protector and champion of the oppressed. Although Ebewag was one of the prominent religions practiced in ancient Somalia, there are indicators of other religions having been practiced in the region prior to the arrival and spread of Islam in the 7th century AD. For example, members of the Yiber clan often claim to have direct ancestry from the Hebrews who had migrated out of Egypt during the Exodus and were subsequently scattered throughout the Middle East and in parts of Africa, including Ethiopia, Eritrea and Somalia. Recent historic studies partially support this claim as some of the early settlers living along Somalia's southern coastal cities such as Mogadishu, Bosasu, Burmama and Borko may have indeed practiced early forms of Judaism as was the case in neighboring Ethiopia and in Yemen as well as in certain regions of mainland Arabia long before the advent of Islam. Masjidka Qiblatayn wa amit kamit ah Masajidada uguda da wain adunka Wahana la disay Karnagi tadawad e miladiga Kadib marki u nabi Muhammad Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam U sahabada yukar ehledi sa kamit ah U ku amray ina yuhi jirodan o ay megan galyowey distan Bakor ki ka armina yey Lulka abisyen ya O maantana lo yakano Itobiya Hijredan waxa lo yaqana, hijredi ugu hreisay. Masjid Qiblatayn is one of the oldest mosques in the world and was built in the 7th century CE following the migration of Prophet Muhammad's community on his instructions for his disciples and some members of his family to seek refuge with the king in Abyssinia, which is modern-day Ethiopia. This migration is known as the first hijra. Though it is certainly one of the earliest mosques built during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, it remains unclear as to whether it was the first one built in East Africa as there are similar mosques built by the companions of Prophet Muhammad in Eritrea which also dates back to the same century. The mosque in Zayla is distinct from later mosques due to the fact that it was built facing both Mecca to the north and Jerusalem. The history of this mosque reveals a lot about the early spread of Islam in this region which was characterized by Somalia's large-scale conversion into Islam following the arrival of the first Arab Muslim migrants who had traveled out of Mecca and journeyed through Silak towards the kingdom of Aksum in the 7th century. From these records, it is evident that the native population of Zayla had accepted Islam long before the rest of Africa and even before most of the Arab regions. Among the earliest indigenous Somali tribes to accept Islam were the Dir clan. It is also reported that they helped the Arab migrants in the construction of this early mosque. Though now mostly in ruins, the prayer direction towards both Mecca and Jerusalem still remain visible. There are also a few other features, including the arch on the right, two square windows, and a few columns with the rosettes intact and a bent minaret. One of the oldest mosques built in Eritrea was established by the first Muslim migrants who arrived from Mecca seeking refuge in the kingdom of Aksum, Abyssinia, during the 7th century CE. These Arab Muslim migrants established a few mosques on their way, most notably Masjid Qiblatayn in Zayla, which together with Masjid al-Sahaba in Eritrea can be considered to have been the first mosques built during the lifetime of the Prophet Muhammad Eritrea's historic mosque is located in the eastern region of Massawa port, making it the closest mosque to the Red Sea from mainland Africa. It can therefore be concluded that the local inhabitants of this region may have encountered the message of Islam before anyone else on the continent. Evidence of this is apparent in the fact that the mosque points towards the first Qibla in Jerusalem at a time when the Muslim community used to face only that direction in prayer. 
before permission was granted to turn towards Mecca instead. Although the mosque is commonly accepted to have been built during the lifetime of Prophet Muhammad وسلم, however since then there have been further architectural developments throughout the years. One example of this is the minaret and the curved mihrab, neither of which were established features of the earliest mosques and the very first curved mihrab was installed in Medina during the rule of the Umayyad Khalifa Umar ibn Abdul Aziz while the first known mosques built of minarets were reportedly introduced during the early 9th century under the reign of the Abbasid dynasty. These features became more popular during the 11th century. Today, Masjid al-Sahaba is a historic site where occasional prayers are offered as part of ceremonial functions. The mosque maintains its simple structure with its mihrab and four-stepped mimbar. Why not get access to our exclusive collection of ebooks, posters, and history archives by supporting us on Patreon today? Get your Elm Pass for as little as $1 per month and help us make history.